Hey everyone, it's Franchise Horror Reviews, and I hope everybody's having a great day so far. I'm going to kind of take a break from the reviews for this little creep show marathon I'm doing for a little while on my channel. And I want to bring up an unmade movie that uh, I recently learned about. And since I'm such a big horror nerd, and I, I'm a big fan of lost media and stuff like that, I feel like I would make a, a talk video kind of discussing this. Uh, and it's covering the unmade Tales from the Dark Side 2 movie. Now, I came across this on the Wikipedia page uh, for the, the movie, and it talks about an unmade sequel. I'm going to read this to you. Laurel Productions initially announced a sequel in the, to the film in October of 1990. A screenplay was written by the first film screenwriters Michael McDowell and George Romero, along with Gahan Wilson. Segments planned included an adaptation of Robert Bloch's Almost Human, uh, which was like a, a very retro science fiction story that dated back to the 50s that had um, radio adaptations made of it, and some alter, altered versions of it on radio as well. Um, and Robert Bloch, in case you didn't know, was the creator of Psycho. And alongside with Almost Human by Robert Bloch was supposed to be adaptations of Stephen King's works, uh, which were short stories called Pinfall, originally planned for Creepshow 2, that never made it into the film. He wrote that story for Creepshow 2 specifically, and it just got scrapped, and then the Laurel Productions ran by that guy, um, what's his name, something Rubenstein? Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Uh, Richard P. Rubenstein. He had that film laying around and decided to strategically hold off on it for the sequel to Tales of the Dark Side, uh, the movie. And then the third story was going to be Rainy Season, which was a 1989 short story that Stephen King released. And uh, I guess they acquired the film rights for that. Uh, but uh, the sequel, however, never came to fruition. So I haven't read any of these stories. I'm only going off um, interpretations of what I see online, of what these stories are about, or synopsis, right? Uh, the first one, Almost Human, by Robert Block, there's not many reviews of it online, but I did find something on Goodreads that kind of sticks out to me. Um, and somebody wrote in a review, it says, Almost Human by Robert Block, when a mechanical creation gets influenced by a man manipulative intruder and murders his original master. And then... Um, goes down to um, Duke's, quote-unquote, Duke's secret lessons were bearing fruit. Junior was wise behind, beyond his years. Now Junior wrote upon the blackboard in his hidden nursery chamber and the inscrutable mechanism in his chemical, mechanically controlled brain guided his steel fingers as he traced the awkward scrawls. My name is Junior, he wrote. I can shoot a gun. The gun will kill. I like to kill. I hate the professor. I will kill the professor. So essentially the story is about this man who creates a robot and the robot gets tainted uh, by an intruder and these thoughts that intrude the robot's mind since uh, it was kind of detached from its owner from the rest of the world these outside thoughts come into his brain and now he's kind of adapted these thoughts and wanted, wants to do harm to his creator. Now, this concept <laughs> sounds familiar to a lot of science fiction things dealing with robots. And I have here a picture of where the story can be found in. And I'm going to acquire uh, a copy of this just because I'm, I'm curious about what the story would have been like. And it's collected here in Invasion of the Robots, uh, collected by Roger Elwood. And on the back it says, Robert Block, uh, almost human. You can kind of see it down there, third row from the bottom. Um, so it has the story in there, and I'm very curious to see what it's about. Uh, like I said, I haven't read them, uh, this, or any of these stories for that matter, before. And I just want to make a video kind of discussing them, and then after I acquire the stories and read them, I'll come back and give my thoughts on what this movie may have looked like, right? So the second story mentioned was Pinfall, which was supposed to be in Creepshow 2. Stephen King wrote this story when he wrote the original script back in, I think, 1984 for Creepshow 2, before it got changed, before production in 1986. Um, and in this 
story, supposedly it keeps true, and the comic adaptation that came out way later of it adapts this exact story. So on the Wikipedia for Pinfall, uh, it says, um, the summary related to this version of the story appearing in the Creep Show 2 screenplay. So this is what was written originally in the screenplay. Um, I'm assuming that it's the same in the comic, like I said, but I don't know if there's any changes to it. Uh, the story centers around two rival teams in a 10-pin bowling league. The white-collar Regimen, led by the self-important Reggie Rambeau, who takes bowling extremely seriously. And the blue-collar Bad News Boars, led by the easygoing Chooch Mandolino, who prioritizes having a good time with his friends. As the story begins, the two teams are bowling in adjacent lanes on a team night at the Big Ten Lanes bowling alley in every town, with the Regimen on track to win the league. After an 82-year-old bowling aficionado named J. Frederick McDougall incurs Reggie's ire by breaking his concentration, Chooch invites McDougall to become an honorary member of the Bad News Boars for the night. While attempting to make a 7-10 split, McDougall suffers a cardiac seizure, resulting in a freak accident that, sends, uh, that sees him fatally crushed by the pin setter. Okay. Following McDougall's death, it was revealed that he was the world's 10th wealthiest man and that he has bequeathed $5 million after tax to the Big Ten Lanes team with the highest score at the end of the season. After the bad news boars begin narrowing the regiment's lead, the regiment resort to sabotaging their opponents is dodge van by surreptitiously serip loosening bolts on the axle, resulting in the bad news boars being killed when the van careams off a cliff and explodes. Following the incident, which in, is deemed a tragic incident uh, accident to the regimen, they have publicly announced they will buy each of the Bad News Boar special headstones to commemorate them if they win the league. While the regimen are practicing late one night in the closed Big Ten lanes, the lights are switched off and they are confronted by something otherworldly. And I don't want to get into this part because it seems spoilerish, uh, but that's what this story sounds like. Very Creepshow-esque. I think this has more of that original Creepshow vibe to it. Uh, definitely has that Stephen King flair. Uh, and it was technically adapted by George Romero in the screenplay from an idea Stephen King had. So I think they're both co-writers on this. And this makes me interested to check out the comic, which I have a picture of it here. Um, if I can find a copy of it online. They released this years ago with Arrow Video in a copy of Creepshow 2, uh, like limited box set editions, you're able to acquire the story. And I think it's online somewhere. Um, but yeah, i got to check this out. This was supposed to be in Tales from the Dark Side 2, the movie, but never happened. It was also supposed to be in Creepshow 2. So this makes it the, the only Creepshow-associated story that we know of to never actually get made in some capacity. Cat from Hell, if you know that about Creepshow 2, went on to be in Tales from the Dark Side, the movie that came out in 1990. So that one did live on. Right? And then the final one that the uh, Wikipedia mentioned was a story called Rainy Season by Stephen King. And Rainy Season uh, has a plot summary on Wikipedia. And it's about a young husband and wife on summer vacation rent a house in a small town called Willow, Maine, only to be warned repeatedly, if vaguely, to leave by the local inhabitants. They do not comply, and having purchased groceries, return to the house. They learn the price for prosperity the citizens of Willow must pay. Every seven years, a husband and wife will go there from outside and will stay, despite protests, to become sacrifices during the rainy season. When the rain starts, the couple learns the nature of the precipitation. An army of grotesque black toads the size of footballs armed with needle-sharp teeth and able to chew through doors and walls. After the carnage, the toads melt away into poisonous sludge that is washed away easily. Two residents debate the price that is paid for their prosperity, but there is nothing they can do about it. And supposedly there has been adaptations um, in like audiobook. Apparently there was a short film adapta uh, adapted in 2002 and in 2017 as a German one. Um, but this story sounds kind of intriguing, and it was published in Midnight Graffiti, number three, spring of 1989, originally. And I think it's been collected in a, in a collection of Stephen King's short stories. But here's the picture of uh, the cover 
featuring, you know, a Stephen King book with Stephen King holding it. It says Rainy Season and you see the toad on the back cover there. So these stories supposedly make up the lost uh, Tales from the Dark Side 2 movie. Now, having not read them, I think it kind of follows the formula of the original Tales from the Dark Side movie. You have like a, a hokey beginning. Let's say the first story is that um, almost human story. It feels kind of pulpy, science fiction-y in a way. Uh, so that kind of fits. The second story, like like the original movie, which was Cat from Hell, could be Pinfall, uh, kind of going back to the creep show roots a little bit in the middle. And then the final story, Rainy Season, I don't know if there's really a moral there, <laughs> uh, but I'm assuming this this is the story they would have ended off on. They could have done something kind of creepy with that, I'm, I'm assuming, with the toads and the rain and the superstition and legend aspect to it. Sounds like it could have been a little fun movie. Uh, how it was never made, I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe the, I don't know if the Tales from the Dark Side movie made money. I'm assuming it did, maybe it didn't. I haven't checked the box office. Man, I could, um, let's see here. Does it say it here? It says, budget 3.5 million, box office. Okay, so they did make money. They made almost five times the budget of the film. So, I don't know why this got canceled. Maybe uh, the production company maybe lost vested interest with Paramount. I don't know. Maybe uh, they lost some of the uh, film rights for some stories they wanted to adapt. Who knows? Uh, but essentially, that's what the movie would have been. Uh, if you've read any of these stories before, uh, Almost Human by Robert Block, uh, Rainy Season by Stephen King, or maybe you've read the Pinfall comic that came out a few years ago uh, that was supposed to be in, in Creepshow 2 and in Tales from the Dark Side 2, let me know down in the comments section which one's your favorite story, uh, which one's your least favorite. I'm going to check these out, and since they kind of have ties to this Tales from the Dark Side franchise, which also has ties to Creepshow, I might individually review these stories as I read them and come across them. Uh, so yeah, well, let me know. Uh, what do you think about this? Do you think it's interesting? Uh, would you want to see uh, some of these stories get made into a film adaptation? I know Rainy Season has been a couple times. And I think Pinfall had a GoFundMe years ago about it. But I'm not sure what became of it. And I'm not sure at all about Almost Human. I don't think it has one, but... Yeah, let me know down in the comment section what you think, what's your favorite one, what's your least favorite one, if you've read these. Um, and if you have any information on this topic, also put it down in the comment section. That really helps, too. And I'll see you next time.